Hello and welcome back. I uh, hope you all got your coffee and you're ready to go for our second session today. Anyone that's just joining at the moment, please note if you want to interact with us, talk to us, comments, Q&A, send them all into the Q&A and we will answer them as we go through. The way this works is I'll ask you a question uh, that Professor Joseph Wall has sent me. We'll gather some information and then I'll hand you over to Professor Joseph Walsh to talk about um, agriculture and AI and sustainability and all that good stuff. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end. OK, so just to give you a little flavor. So um, Professor Joseph Walsh is also head of the School uh, in, of STEM and the IMAR Research Centre at IT Trilly in County Kerry. Sonny Kerry here today. His background and research experience is um, in intelligent metatronics and sensors, dairy technology, robotics and automation. And Joe, if any of this is incorrect, I'm sure you will correct me. Um, Joe has sent me one question to ask you today, guys, and I'm going to share that with you. OK, so thinking caps on. Now, OK, so to do this, you take out your phone. And you go to menti, M-E-N-T-I dot com. I love using this app because I get a sense of where your guys' heads are at and what you're thinking. So use the code 360485. And the question today is a simple one. Is AI just compatible with agriculture? Or does agriculture need AI? I think at this present moment in time, growing population and all that kind of stuff, um, it'll be interesting to see what your answers are because um, yeah, I suppose definitely AI is compatible, but does agriculture need it as we move into the next phase? So just go to menti.com and use the code 360485. So I'll give you a minute. Great. OK, it looks like we're we're having a clear winner on the agriculture and uh, needs AI. The 18, 18 agriculture needs AI, one for um, just compatible, 1920, all that good stuff. OK, I'm going to park it there, guys, and we'll move on. Joe, I hope that um, that ties in and correlates with what you're going to present today. Uh, the title of Joe's presentation is AI for Sustainable Agriculture, and I'll hand over to you, Joe. Thanks, Redine. I'm very delighted to be um, speaking at the inaugural International John McCarthy AI Summer School, and um, I hope it will be an interesting um, discussion and presentation that you might take some insights into um, or away from the presentation today. So just a I suppose a little bit of personal information, you know, as uh, Redeen has already said, I'm head of school of, of STEM in IT Trilly. I'm also the director of the IMR Mechatronics um, um, and RFID Research Centre and also the director of the Agritech Centre of Excellence. And I'm going to tell you some more information about that uh, later on in the presentation. And just to acknowledge um, we are the Institute of Technology now, but from the 1st of January, we will be merging with the Cork Institute of Technology to become the Monster Technological University, and that was a great achievement for us. And we've been striving um, like TU Dublin for that for a number of years. So it was great to finally get it over the line. So that's the question. And I think there was a clear answer to the question. Um, agriculture needs AI, um, but you know, why, why does it actually need AI? So let's tease that over a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the overall scene in the presentation and um, just talk about some technology advancements, give some examples of AI in agriculture, um, current projects that we're doing ourselves uh, using AI in agriculture. So IT Trilly traditionally um, has offered a wide range of programs in the agricultural engineering space. So we would have a lot of interaction and connections with the tier one um, and all of the agri-tech companies within Ireland and we have a lot of active projects with with those particular companies, very applied projects, 
Um, I'm also a funded investigator in two of the SFI research centres, Lero, the Irish Software Research Centre, and Confirm in the area of smart manufacturing. Um, but under the Enterprise Ireland Regional Enterprise Development Fund, we were also su successful in obtaining funding to develop um, an agri-tech centre of excellence. And I'm going to tell you some, um, some information about that particular centre, um, as I said later in the presentation. So, to start off, world population, um, 2011, there was about 7 billion people on the planet. Um, heading to 2050, we're looking at 9 billion people on the planet, which is, I suppose, a, a phenomenal increase. Um, just to give some more insights, um, if you look at the actual population growth right up to 2100, um, on the high side, we could be up around 16 billion. Um, on the medium or low side, we're still up to, you know, 8 to 10 billion. So what does that mean? It obviously means that we are going to be heading to a food, a world food crisis. Um, we are going to have to um, increase the agricultural production output um, by about threefold using less energy and less water. And this is going to be a phenomenal challenge. And this is where really the focus of using data that we have and using artificial intelligence and machine learning to analyze and interpret and find sensitivities in that data is how we are going to address uh, this particular food crisis that is coming down the line within the next 20 to 30 years. Um, if you look at four out of the last five years, we didn't produce enough food, um, which obviously is, is a concern. And just to you know, look at the global demand, agriculture in 2050 will need to produce almost 50% more food, feed and biofuel than in 2012. But if you look at you know, data since the 1990s, the, aver the average annual increase in yields of maize, rice and wheat is only about 1%. So we, ha we are facing a major challenge and a major crisis. Um, and we need technologies and advanced technologies to assist us in um, coming with coming up with solutions to address this 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 problem that is is coming um, sooner than we think. Just to give a little bit of context, you know the size of the agricultural um, you know area within an Irish context. So ten percent of all employment in Ireland is directly and indirectly related to agriculture. So that's how important the industry is. Um, and just to throw in another or another stat, you know, the US EPA estimates that agriculture contributes roughly 330 billion in annual revenue to the economy in the US each year. So this is a massive, massive industry. But that's as we are now. If you're looking at where we need to be, we're looking at um, a substantial change, a step change in the industry as a whole. What is Irish agriculture? I suppose we have um, about 4. million hectares, 81% um, is devoted to, to grass, 11% to rough grazing, and 8% to crops, fruit and horticulture. Um, then on the other side, I suppose the, the agricultural output um, in 2016 is about 7 billion, and that's divided up between beef, dairy, pig, sheep, cereals and others. Um, so, you know, as I said, even from an Irish perspective, 7 billion is, is a huge, um, you know, uh, gross domestic output. So it's a massive industry, not only within Ireland, but, but, but globally. So I suppose if you look at the product flow, and I, uh, you know, I'll tie all of this back into um, artificial intelligence, but, you know, we sow the seeds, then you have crop maintenance and monitoring. Then you harvest the crop and then we have maybe animal crop um, maintenance that you would get from the dairy sector, then farm gate, food processing, transport, logistics, uh, supermarket, consumer. So there's a huge diverse array of um, individual areas within the actual product flow. And I would say that to address the step change that we need, um, we need to incorporate and embed um, newer technologies and intelligence in each of these locations throughout the product flow. 
just the companies that are very active, I suppose, in, in the space and in the, in the product flow in Ireland. You can see um, you have the Altex, you have the McHale's, Samco's, Dairy Master, Keenan's. Um, you know, so we're very active in this space, and obviously that's why it's such an important industry um, to to Ireland, and obviously with the Kerry groups, etc. At the other side, um, so this is something that um, you know we really need to be at the forefront of the innovation um, because it is so such an important industry to Ireland. So I suppose what I would say is that there's two areas that we can use um, AI in this particular. Um, in this particular product flow. So we would have um, on-farm activities. So all of the technologies required to, um, to help us to have better efficiency and increase output on-farm level. And then we have all the off-farm stuff, the food processing, um, you know, the transportation, logistics, etc. So if we look at the on-farm stuff, what, what could we do on-farm to make, um, I suppose, the the uh, on-farm output better, obviously keeping the sustainability um, of, of what we need to do and that increase in, in mind. So we need to become more efficient, um, autonomous and connected machinery for farmers with software that will improve efficiency and minimize environmental impact. Um, a more data-rich environment for agri-machinery industry to develop next generation connected autonomous machinery and to facilitate new data driven business models. OK, and this is is obviously something that's new to farmers where they have um, a complete array of data and they're making a new decision based on that, which is a completely different um, way they would have done it previously. And that will drive the, the business models, the newer business models that they need. Um, improved adaptive um, collection or data collection and processing techniques. Um, for agribusinesses can provide an accurate and, and, and relevant secure data to consumers and food producers alike. So you're tying in everything together. And obviously, we need to have consumers to trust the food that they buy and improve the quality, reliability and accuracy and security of the data they receive about the food that they actually buy. The off-farm activities ranging from your processing to your consumer, um, I think a lot of that is going to be driven by the, uh, the data that's there and how you an analyze and interpret the huge amount of data, but it would be cloud store data. And what do you do with that? You need to develop automated techniques to configure sensors, um, development of adaptive techniques to ensure data confidentiality, um, and obviously approaches based on existing blockchain technologies uh, to ensure um, the integrity of the data collection um, and also then we need to the identification of data processing techniques to interpret data and provide meaningful answers to consumers. There's a huge vast amount of data already out there and I suppose what we need to do is that how do you interpret that and that is one of the major I suppose functions of how we can use machine learning and artificial intelligence to assist in that um, process of making that da data that is available meaningful. So farms are growing bigger. There is a huge need for technological advancement. Um, I think that's that that's clear. And if we look at the big data or the big technology trends, obviously the Internet of Things, you know, data analytics, machine learning. Autonomous systems, adaptive systems, you know, everything involving that, that intelligence, 3D printing. And we need to incorporate these big technology trends into agriculture um, to ensure that we will get the, efficient, the efficiencies that are required to bring us to that level that we need in food production. So artificial intelligence. Today's applications is just endless. It is used everywhere and this is just a flavor of everything that you can do and every sector that is using applications of artificial intelligence. And this is where really, I suppose, we need to go to the next level and use all of these applications um, in all of the areas associated with agriculture um, to ensure that we get sustainable um, growth within the sector. So I suppose going back to agriculture and AI, 
you know, factors such as climate change and population growth, as we've already uh, already outlined, you know, and food security concerns really has propelled the industry into seeking more innovative approaches to protecting and improving crop yield. As a result, um, AI is steadily emerging um, as part of the industry's technological um, evolution. Most popular applications of AI in agriculture fall into three major categories, uh, agricultural robots. You know, a lot of companies now are developing um, programming autonomous robots, uh, looking at doing agricultural tasks such as harvesting crops um, at a higher volume and a faster pace than human laborers. I suppose, unfortunately, a lot of, um, there are, you know, it, it's tough to get skill, human laborers within a, an agricultural environment in certain countries. It's not something that people want to do um, as much anymore. And that's where incorporating, you know, your, your robotic solutions to assist that process as assistive technologies for farmers is where we need to go. Obviously, the crop and soil monitoring, you know, companies are, are looking at computer vision, deep learning algorithms to process data by drones or other software based technologies to, to monitor crop and soil health, which is so important. And all of these are, are, are greatly linked. And then you have predictive analytics. Machine learning models are being developed to track and predict various environmental impacts on the crop yield, such as weather changes. So I just wanted to give an example of why we need AI. This is Mike Milk Price um, over the last 40 years. So you see that there is huge volatility in the price of milk. Um, and you know that will be here. It has been there for the last 40 years and it will continue on. So if you have volatility and you're trying to sustainably grow um, your, your business, your profitability is equal to your margin, which is volatile because that margin is going to go up and down because the milk price is volatile multiplied by your, your, your quantity. So the only thing that you have control over is that quantity. You have control over how much you can get out because the margin is volatile. But, you know, I suppose, how can you um, ensure that you get that increase in quantity um, within, I suppose, keeping agri within sustainable agriculture? And that's what we need to look at. For example, in milk production without quotas, from 1984 to March 2015, you can see that the output um, was stagnant, but now as a result of the, the moving of the removal of the milk quotas, you can see that the projected output in milk um, is in line with what happened in New Zealand when they removed their quotas about 30 years ago, um, where milk output uh, quadrupled with an annual growth of about four or five percent. So we are heading in that direction. So we're increasing the output. Um, but what we need to do is we need the ability to increase that output and to grow, but to grow sustainably. So how do we do that? Well, obviously, look, sensors make sense. We need to incorporate more sensors to collect data. Um, and this is going to be of vital importance throughout the food product flow. Um, you know, the world is connected, Internet of Things. Um, we have so many devices now. There's more mobile phones than people on the planet. Um, all of these devices can talk and are connected. And how do you share and interpret that data um, to ensure that you're getting meaningful value of what the data is actually producing? Obviously, data analytics, I think, has driven a lot more to individualization. So if we look at the likes of Netflix and Amazon, you know, we now have control of what we want to view, watch. Um, so we as individuals can control that and we know um, what we're building up, I suppose, a, an individualization profile. You have all of these, I suppose, smart technologies that are and sensors that are changing our world, GPS, mobile apps, drones, you know, your identification, nutrition, which is a major element of agriculture also. And I think what it is, is it's driving what we already have now, um, individualization of ourselves. So our own Facebook page, our own Google data, Twitter, Yahoo, 
But I think we need to move that individualization into agriculture. So you will have essentially an individual cow with all of their nutrition that they have taken in, all of the health, um, the health status, fertility of that, that animal, for example. Um, and then you bring that right down to, to actually fields and pastures that we're, that we're grazing. Um, and you make that more individual, like we have actually done ourselves with individualization. Okay, I'll just check for time, not too bad. So I suppose I just wanted to mention now a few of the applied research projects that we're, we're doing within the IMR Research Centre. And um, just to give you a flavour of the types of applications that we're doing um, and integrating artificial intelligence to real world, I suppose, applications that are required. So this project is an SFI Euro funded project in collaboration with Dairy Master, who are obviously a, a tier one um, agri tech company who develop um, and design and develop agricultural um, milking parlors and scrapers. So this project has a team of six uh, researchers, my teacher Lee, and four um, from the University of Limerick working on this over a, a four year period, looking at three strands of so the development of mobile autonomous adaptive systems, um, looking at the operation of agricultural um, assistive farm technologies. So I suppose developing robotic solutions that will um, provide the farmer with an assistive technology. I don't think um, full autonomy will ever be there. You still will require a farmer to be present, but you know, while the farmer is doing another job, this assistive robotic solution um, can, can work in parallel and provide the farmer with the time to do other tasks. Um, another strand of the project is looking at data analytics and machine learning using the data generated by Dairy Masters, one of Dairy Masters current systems called the Moon Monitor, which is a heat detection system. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, later and also dairy herd management tools. And the third strand of that project is that we're looking at developing new sensor technologies and data analytics for monitoring a range of elements within the dairy farm itself. So looking at milk quality analysis, for example, and providing all of this information back to the farmer where I suppose decisions can be made as to what um, the farmer wants to do um, if a certain um, situation occurs and puts more power, I suppose, and control in the farmer's hand. Just, I suppose, to give an example of, of Dairy Master's Moo Monitor Plus system, um, this is a, a fertility um, tag that actually goes on around the, the cow's neck. Data is collected, then data is transferred, data is analysed, and then the data is visualised. So, to give you an idea, there's about 300 million data points per day collected in this um, device that goes around the cow's um, neck. And that data is then analysed um, um, and, you know, a, a series of, of uh, AI algorithms um, analyse that data to provide an output and give you behavioural analysis um, for the cow, whether it's resting, activity, feeding, rumination, you know, which are incredibly powerful um, pieces of information at an individual cow level um, to be able to see exactly, you know, is the cow, um, is the yield increasing? Why isn't the yield increasing? Um, is there an issue with uh, feeding? Um, is the cow fertile if you need to, you know, get um, the cow artificially inseminated, you know, at the right time? All of this information is, is, is there at your fingertips so you can then have more control as to what you want to do um, and that bringing back the concept of that individualization for each cow, animal, you know, each element within the agricultural product flow. So here you can see that using this data, it can be grouped, individual or group analytics around activity and, and resting and feeding, etc., which is extremely powerful when you think about all of this data available and now if you go back 20 or 30 years you know this thing this type of, of level of data and um, the information that would be available just would be unheard of and then you can look at we'll say analyzing the data in, in other ways where you can identify a range of ailments such as respiratory, res respiratory infections or you know a cow with DA which is a turned stomach um, and this is giving you 
fertile information on the cow at an individual level, whether uh, about fertility and about health, which is which is huge. Um, and obviously, if you can control these, you can um, be in a position where you can maximize the yield output of the cow and obviously maximize your 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 quantity that is coming out, which will alleviate from the fluctuations that you will have in milk price and that volatility we spoke about. This was just another um, project that we were looking at as part of uh, one of the research students where we were looking at how you would use artificial intelligence in the weaning of calves. So obviously um, what you want to do is that you want to make sure that the calf after birth um, attains a healthy weight gain and um, that the condition the, the cow themselves are in the best condition for the next breeding season, which is a key phase of, of the dairy cattle sustainability. Naturally, weaning would, would occur about seven to 14 months, but artificial weaning would normally occur four to seven months. And I suppose you can see there that, you know, weaning, the, some devices that would be put on that would deter the cow from actually, you know, going up and, and um, approaching their mother's other and actually suckling um, would be the devices that I have um, in the picture there, which really are not nice. So what we wanted to try to do in this project was come up with a mechanism um, where uh, you would be able to wean the cow off just in, a, I suppose, a, 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 a method using artificial intelligence. Um, we looked at two different areas. One was using a camera and one was using an accelerometer. Um, if the cow was taken from, if the calf was taken away from the cow too early, what can happen is that the cow will be in distress and the milk yield will fall and also um, the calf will be in distress. So you want to keep the calf with their mothers um, as long as possible. So this particular device um, that we developed, which was a collar with a camera and an accelerometer um, based on the collar, identified when the camera moved um, and identified the other and the teats within the other. So what we didn't do it, but it's something that we would be hoping a company will take on board. Um, the deterrent would be like a dog collar that the cow would get a little, um, little tip or a little shock um, to deter them from going um, near the other, which eventually will, will aid the, the, the weaning process and that they will move more naturally into eating hay, etc. So that was another project that we um, we were looking at over the last number of years. I suppose a project that we are um, currently looking at is around um, intelligent closed loop process control for precision farming. Um, you know, this is a, a typical uh, common uh, you know GIS diagram that you see. There's a lot going on and there's a lot of information available, but strangely enough, that information is is very fragmented. Um, you know, it's a challenge to integrate different seasonal or waste-wise crop data into one single equation, um, and there is no feedback in general. So the lack of feedback, um, a feedback loop, you know, will affect the actual yield that you're producing um, and for each of the crops. So what we're trying to do is address that situation where there is a, a feedback loop embedded in the data that's collected that you will be able to um, maximize I suppose your crop output. So I suppose just looking at your, your standard, you know, process control with your, with your feedback, what we want to try to do is develop a recommender system with machine learning for optimal crop parameters. And this will allow us to prepare the soil correctly for the particular crop and to plant the seed, to apply the right, right correct amount of water and fertilizer fertilizer and then to um, harvest that and maximize your output. So the recommender system will take a wide range of data um, such as the, the, the fertilizer spread rate, uh, the GPS data of that, where it actually was, um, was spread and then taking all of this information in that you will be able to provide that as a feedback loop to the following season, taking environmental data um, into consideration also and to be able to use that data to provide the correct amount of nutrients into the soil to maximize your, your, your crop yield and your output. So we're currently doing and have developed that recommender system, um, which actually sits um, in the tractor cabin 
um, of a number of tractors that we have in farms. And we're concentrating on a number of the, I suppose, crops, the common crops, such as rapeseed and winter wheat, barley and grass pastures as well. So it's a very interesting project where we're taking a wide range of inputs, um, providing, I suppose, doing some analytics um, internally within the recommender system and to be able to provide that closed loop system um, that will, the following season, allow a maximum output of your yield. Okay, so this is a confirmed manufacturing or smart manufacturing project that we're doing with the tier one agri-tech companies called Digital Transformation of Agri-tech Manufacturing in Ireland. Um, big project, there's 11 researchers working on this, seven master's students and PhDs and four uh, research assistants and postdocs. I suppose really what, what, what the, the object of this particular project is that Confirm, the SFI Centre, was the vehicle to allow us to bring the Tier 1 agri-tech companies together. Um, as I said before, IT Tralee has been offering a suite of agricultural education you know, for the last 40 years around agricultural engineering and technology. Um, so I suppose these companies, which are Irish indigenous companies, um, you know, would be exporting globally. Um, but, you know, when you're actually exporting global, globally, you are competing at a different playing field. You know, you're not going from playing national football anymore. It's international football. And, you know, these companies really need to be at the, the cutting edge of innovation to make, to be the differentiator that you're going to buy one of their, their products over one of their competitors. So I suppose one of the challenges that they would see is that, um, you know, based in Ireland, if you need to um, install a milking parlour or, you know, service a, a McHale's baler or a Nabby spreader, and if it's based somewhere around the world, you know, training is a big thing and installation is a big thing. So even though you might have a distributor in New Zealand or Australia, for them to come over to the plant to do training, you know, it's not easy for them logistically. It's a couple of, you know, it could be a couple of days couple of weeks where they'd have to essentially down tools and come over to to um, to Ireland and do the training required for that service um, and installation um, technicians or engineers. So I suppose they came to us and you know could could we use technologies to address these particular challenges um, and I suppose you know if you think of, of, of certain um, areas such as maybe the automotive sector you know, the automotive sector would be very big around these types of concepts of customer experience um, and how could we bring those type of concepts um, forward for um, our Irish agri-tech companies. So this project has two strands. One is around uh, digital technical training using virtual reality and augmented reality. And I suppose, you know, machine learning um, and artificial intelligence are, are bedded into that training content where we're um, I suppose if somebody requires, um, you know, training content that it will be easily available any part of the world, if they require support that it will be available, but it won't require travel. And I think as a result of the situation with the COVID pandemic that we find ourselves in, you know, global travel might not be as easy um, as it was. So, you know, being able to provide that digital training virtually um, is something that's going to become really important. And obviously what you want to do is that when your machines are out in the field anywhere in the world, that there is an element of predictive maintenance where you can analyze data and look at trends and sensitivities in the data um, and to be able to provide that perfect predictive and preventative maintenance, which is which is vitally important. So as I already outlined, there's a number of strands in that particular project. Um, digital training, we're going to be looking at obviously the digital technical training in remote and immersive and virtual training programs um, and this is really at the forefront um, around virtual reality caves and using training content with augmented reality um, and really this will uh, hopefully push um, the Irish agri-tech sector to be at the, the, the cutting edge of innovation around training um, in the coming years. And obviously, just the importance of, as I've already said, you know, data analytics and machine learning for predictive maintenance. This is so important um, in now this global market 
Uh, you need to collect all this data. You should be analyzing it stored in the cloud, looking at trends. Um, and that requires for agricultural machines, you know, integration of sensors in harsh agricultural environments to collect that data and upload it to the cloud. So um, this is a really interesting project that um, we're working on as well. So I suppose really just to finish, um, I wanted to talk about um, what we developed around this Agritech Centre of Excellence and um, the objective of the centre, which is funded by Enterprise Ireland, was to deliver excellence in learning and development in the agri-tech sector in Ireland. It's a collaboration between IT Tralee and Enterprise Ireland, Kerry County Council, um, and the three tier one agri-tech companies, which are Dairymaster, McHale's and Abbey Machinery. So I suppose the concept that we came, a lot of people, you know, look at their product configuration and their product offering. So if you take, for example, you know, a mobile phone, if you look at, we'll say a Samsung mobile phone or an Apple mobile phone, there's very little difference between them. They have a camera, you know, they have um, a phone, you have applications, etc. Fundamentally, it's the same thing. But I think what really people have missed is around this experience, you know, this exceptional customer experience um, where somebody, you know, would buy one of your products and that you would give them an experience which is which is so which is so good that um, they would never think about purchasing another um, product from any of, of of any other competitor that you would have to go back. You know, I, I must say companies like a lot of the automotive companies like Mercedes, BMW, they have really worked well in this space. Where you know, if you drive a BMW or a Mercedes, you have that experience where you couldn't possibly drive another brand. I think Apple have done it well, you know, with the iPhones and Mac and iPad that, you know, if you use an Apple product, um, that it's very hard to change from that particular product. And a lot of, I suppose, data that they have collected and analyzed using, you know, techniques like AI and machine learning around the experience is something that um, is an area that really is a hot topic that people should be moving into. Um, the Agritech Centre of Excellence in IT Tralee, we're just currently finalising the development of our virtual reality cave, where we will provide, I suppose, the Agritech companies a facility to train people in this type of environment. So no matter where you're, you're based or, or in the world, that you will have um, access to um, VR and AR content around each of the product offerings that they have. And I suppose this really will be a driver in the next generation of training um, the staff in these companies and the distributors that they have and the servicing of these machines, which um, is really going to be um, so important um, in this new global environment. So there's a huge amount of, of technology there. Um, I think which direction is it all going? Um, what I would say is that what would the future look like in 30 years, 20 years, 10 years, you know, and how do we get there tomorrow? If you look back at where I suppose the, the mobile phone, smartphone um, 20 years ago, it was unheard of, you know, Apple 2007, 2008 developed the first smartphone and look where we are now. So this is where technology is moving. And in the next 10 years, I think some of the technologies around, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, virtual reality, augmented reality, I think this is going to be the norm um, and it's really exciting to be working in this particular space. So thank you for your attention um, and I'll take any questions. Great, great stuff. Thanks, Thanks a million. million. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, I'm going to get you just to minimize um, the screen at, at, on the bottom of your um, on your screen, just my face, just to minimize it. Great, there I am. <laughs> um, okay, so just loads of questions coming in, and I'm going to start sharing them now. If you just want to unshare your screen, Joe. Okay. That'd be great. Okay, so we had really good questions coming in from um, loads of questions, so get ready, Joe. Uh, so Dan came in with a question um, asking, are there any countries that have already made step changes in the agricultural industry using AI? 
and I know that you've showed some really exciting in um, kind of indigenous com uh, companies working with AI at the moment here in Ireland, but outside of Ireland, I guess. Well, I suppose, look, there there is companies, um, German companies uh, such as uh, as Westphalia and American companies that are, are, are really looking at, you know, robotic um, solutions. But I think our own Irish companies are really at the forefront um, at the moment as well. Um, we're at the start of this. Um, I think we are there, but we need to go to a, a next level using all of the technologies um, that I that I've outlined around, you know, Internet of Things. Um, it is becoming a, a busy space, but as I said, I think our Irish companies are really performing extremely well in this particular area. Great, cool. That's fantastic news. Uh, Niall came in with a question asking, how might we verify and monitor soil health globally with AI and EO data? Um, I think that's relevant absolutely globally. I think globally is the element there. I think what it is is that we, all the systems collect as much information that we can, um, I suppose, at a, at a national level. And then what we need to do is just feed that all into, you know, a global system that you're looking at different um, weather patterns, um, looking at different how weather, different weather patterns affect soil. Um, and I think it's that type of level. So at a national level, initially, we look at all of this, but then you feed it into maybe from a European Union perspective, European projects where we're, we're collecting all of this data and ensuring that um, all of this data can um, can be used to to maximize you know the soil quality nationally and then internationally and that that global approach isn't there yet am i right joe there wouldn't be that level of of, of um you know collaboration between between i suppose you know continental jurisdictions as of yet and um, even from a european perspective there is a lot of there is a lot of collaborative projects but it could be better collect that data Okay, and actually that feeds um, really well into Ken's question, which is, do you think AI will be able to support farmers in recognizing where agriculture, agricultural use of land has a non-sustainable effect on other animals like mice, birds? Like, is that happening already, Joe, or is it something that we're going to see in the near future? Well, I think, look, that, you know, we have a program here in IT Tralee um, in wildlife biology. We've also a program in agricultural science. I think those type of professions um, need to work closely together. Obviously, everything has to be done sustainably. Um, from a wildlife conservation perspective, that would be done at the moment. But I don't think there's the connectiveness with farmers. There still is that divide. And I think that divide needs to be broken down. Um, we need to work together on this. OK, yeah, and that really does make sense. Um, Matthew asked, Matthew, I hope I'm getting this right. It seems like there's lots of overlap between the Moo monitor, this probably makes sense to you, Joe, and fitness brands. So what is the overlap between AI used with them and the agricultural use? Yeah, there's a huge overlap. Okay. I suppose if, if you look at the technology that would be in a Fitbit um, or your Apple Watches, um, essentially it's that level of, of nanotechnology that is used within the Moo monitor plus. Um, I would say that the battery life in, 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 in in a moon monitor, you know, would be prided around eight to ten years, which is which is fantastic. So I would say it would even be at at a level beyond the innovation that is there with um which are which are smart watches um and your fitness apps that would, would be used. So this is really, you know, next generation cutting edge stuff. Wow, eight eight hours eight what eight, you say, eight to ten eight, eight to ten years. Years. So you you can't you can't charge they call her every uh, night. No, so, can't uh, plug them in. The battery is, is critical and um, it's a major innovation. Wow. Wow. Um, OK, so Matthew actually had a second question, which was, and, and you may or may not be able to answer this, Joe, but what are the impacts so far and projected for some of the projects that you mentioned? Um, and you mentioned a few, so even if you pick one or two, and um, are the improvements sustainable? I think, look, everything that we're doing with the projects, um, around I suppose assistive technologies for for you know dairy farmers um, if we're looking at one of the projects I think by developing projects like that we're going to make agriculture sustainable um, and I think that will be one of the you know as I said we need 
we need to you know increase our, our, our output by threefold by 2050 you know using less energy and water so what we need to do is it's going to be a range of, of scientific solutions that will be done i suppose by you know geneticists agricultural scientists but also on the technology side it will be um, increased applications of robotics and assistive technologies for farmers that will allow them to um, to make i suppose increase to to have that increased output um, and to have the increase sustainable so uh, with that sustainability that's required that all makes sense yep yeah. um, and i suppose probably our last question is um how can you make ai for agriculture an attraction attractive option for data scientists so you suppose it's a very interesting one you know um i think agriculture is the ideal location where a data scientist can actually get stuck in there's so much data that's there um and i think um i i, I think to make it attractive what i would say is that you know we we do have um and a food crisis situation coming it's really interesting data um that is being generated from real world um you know sensing um with with i suppose within our environment and i think myself that um you know if you were looking at any type of data anything relating to your our environment and agriculture is something that you know is very interesting and that uh, i would encourage anyone to look more um, and specialize in this field yeah, and I think like you're making a really good point. You're like one of the things is for agriculture, it's around impact and sustainability. And I think that's attractive to uh, a whole suite of a generation data scientist or not. We so, have two more questions that I might just ask. Um, what uh, do you have involvement with standards or open source bodies to help with the adoption of your developments? That's from Kieran. Thanks, Kieran. So within, within NSFI, uh, Science Foundation, our perspective, our Enterprise Ireland, and the collaborative projects that we do with companies, um, we develop, you know, um, pre-commercial prototypes. So okay. standards um, is something that we wouldn't go to that level, but we would rely on the companies when they commercialize the products that we're developing in collaboration with them to, to take it to that level also. Yep, that makes sense. Um, question in from Anonymous, would you, um, what would be your experience most commonly used data bearer to for ag tech in Irish dairy, uh, 3, 4G, Wi-Fi, LP, WAN? Well, look, I suppose I think myself moving to 5G is something that um, is going to be very exciting. And I think with the, the speeds that are there um, and the connectivity that we have through our, our, our mobile phone network, and um, I think that is, is something that is going to be very exciting over the next five to ten years. I suppose we're going to wrap on this question, but um, Joe, what are your thoughts on AI helping reduce agricultural pollution? I think AI will be a key element of how we will um, how we will move uh, to I suppose to removing and reducing agricultural pollution. And as I said, an important factor is that I think we need to to just get our conservationists or wildlife um, experts to work more closely with with farmers that there does seem to be you know a barrier between one I suppose is trying to you know conserve and um, protect our environment I suppose you know the other side of the argument is the the farmers are, are trying to you know make profit but it's a balance because um, we do need an increase in food production and uh, I think there needs to be more um, collaborative links between both sides to ensure that um, you know we have this sustainability moving forward. Yes, that all makes sense. Okay, I actually have one final question, in um, Joe, and I know you thought you were off the hook there with the last one, but anyway, um, how do you see AI transforming agriculture as we know it? So, where will bioengineering and AI take us, and um, are we ready for that kind of transformation culturally? Marie, I think it's a really good question. It's actually a good one to end up on. I think just yeah. where you see the next five, ten years, you know, and it was kind of how you we were wrapping your own session. Well, I suppose, look, if you look at ten, you know, ten, fifteen years from now, um, the whole area around, you know, I suppose, autonomous vehicles, um, how that will progress, uh, looking at, you know, the likes of, of LIDARs and um, incorporation of more sensors around cars, 
um, to assist with, um, with, with autonomous driving. I think all of those technologies will be incorporated into agriculture. And I think you can see a lot more um, robotic uh, platforms that will be used to do the mundane, mundane tasks that are normally done by farmers on a daily basis. These will, these will be done robotically. And I think then the collection of data and that individualization of having a huge amount of data available, um, almost like you know Facebook pages um, for cows and how you can use that information so effectively to, to maximize your output, but also then to, you know, to take your other environmental concerns into consideration. So it's going to be a really exciting space in the next 15 years. Yeah, absolutely, Marie. That was a great question to end on. Um, yeah, and I think it's like anything you, we talk about transformation uh, being quite rapid and are we ready for it? But just look at the last couple of months. We accelerated our, ourselves quite su substantially. It's amazing what we can do when we, we're forced into it sometimes. Um, Joe, it was an absolute pleasure and I, I know that everyone got an awful lot out of that session because the questions were coming in um, from five minutes into the session, which is always a good sign. Um, really interesting work going on and uh, we'll be keeping an eye out to see how the project progress. And thank you for your time. Thanks for waiting. Thanks. We'll be back in five, 10 minutes, we'll be back in 10 minutes to um, pick up with Dr. Hatem Alfie. He is from CIT and he is going to talk about some applied, showcase some applied um, research projects and AI uh, applications in health tech and uh, life science. So that'll be really interesting. It's one I've been looking forward to. So do come back and join us at three o'clock on the dot and we'll see you then.